Ilya Samsonov stands on his head and leads the Leafs past the Jets on home ice. We'll break it all down and get to some other league-wide news. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. If you place the $5 wager on the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight, you became a winner. Because the Leafs beat the Winnipeg Jets one to nothing in overtime. Austin Matthews with the OT winner. But the story of the game, Dave, Ilya Samsonov, a 32 save shutout, put the team on his back tonight. He was incredible. Yeah, I, I I think I ate my words a little bit after saying on the last show that I didn't expect. Sam, first off, I said I didn't need Sam Stock to be perfect, and I did say I didn't expect him to be perfect. No one and, did, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, and then Sam Stock was just like, nah, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. He had such a great game, um, oh, and, and right up, like, right at the get-go, like, the, the, you look at the first period, the whole game was spent in Toronto's end. I don't know what the hell they were doing in the first period, but 16-4 to four with the shots on goal after the first, and then, obviously, everyone wants to talk about the the uh, the two on zero uh, breakdown on the power play there, which led to maybe like probably one of the best saves of the season, not just for Samsonov, but like for all Maple Leaf goaltenders and maybe even league wide. Like that second stop that he was able to make there off the rebound was just incredible, um, unbelievable save there uh, to keep this one scoreless essentially, uh, and, and you know took this one into overtime. Needed extra time in order to find our first goal the hockey game. Uh, I wouldn't say it was, a, it was a great game by any stretch of the imagination from a, a viewing perspective. It's a little bit more on the snooze fest, especially yeah. when you look at Toronto. And, and I think even Sheldon Keefe, we're seeing some comments come out post game. Even he came out and said it looked like the Leafs were still on the plane. Like they were just that lackadaisical throughout the entire game. The energy level's just super low. Uh, but luckily, man, Sammy was there uh, and he was ready to go tonight. Like he may have been one of the only Leafs who were ready to play, uh, but good thing he was dude. An outstanding performance, 32 save shutout ends up with a 275 goal saved above expected. And uh, it's just another big leap forward for him after coming back from, I don't know if we want to call him demons. I guess we'll call him just like the struggles, the early season struggles that he had prior to Christmas uh, since coming back, he's he's two and one with a one thirty one goals against and a nine forty four save percentage and a shutout tonight. It's been outstanding. Yeah, it's the turnaround has just been. I mean, we didn't we didn't really expect it. Let's be honest. I I didn't expect it to come. Like I said, you know, there's a chance that maybe he can be better. Obviously, it was tough to expect anything worse than what we were getting from Samsonov, but to expect this complete turnaround. You know, credit Samsonov. You know, he 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 took it all, took it on the chin, like literally took the whole thing on the chin, and and you know didn't complain about what was going on. He admitted he needed to be better. That's what he did. He took the time. He got better, and he saved this team's bacon the last two games. He's been in in, in goal. And and when you talk about this team not having energy, which was apparent, like I was ready to fall asleep in that first period. Oh. Uh, they're brutal early on in that game. That save on that two on zero was like it, it. It did two things. One, it got the crowd going. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know that I get it. Scotiabank Arena, not the not the best atmosphere for a hockey game. I'll admit it. But when things like that happen, it wakes that whole arena up, and it did. 
And yeah, yeah. It, standing ovation. Gotta get the, yeah. the standing ovation, which kudos. Like he deserved yeah. it for that type of save. Like that was, I mean, you look at it, technically it was game saving because the Leafs didn't score again in regulation, but that is just an uh, unbelievable stop. Like that's where you got to be on your A game to make those saves to be able cuz like I don't know if 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 a lot of people caught it. I hope they did. But he had to a, about 2 inches kick his foot up yep. to make that save. Like he had to lift the foot a little bit to make sure that he got it knowing that I'm trying to I'm blanket on who was coming in on that uh on the 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 2 on 0 but the guy who had the opportunity to bury the rebound he was going to try and get some lift on that puck. So Ilya Samsonov had to get some lift on it, and he was able to kick it away. And uh, just, uh, you know. And I, was I think it was Barron that had the. Yeah, Morgan Barron. Yes, thank you. And player. yeah, like, let, let's not forget, like, it wasn't one save he made. It wasn't two saves he made. Pretty sure it was three saves that he had to make on that two on O. It, that usually does not happen. Teams, players do on two on O's do not get infinite cracks at trying to score on a two on O. No, usually it ends up at the back of the net. Usually they make zero yeah. saves. On something I was, like I that. was expect, I was totally expecting that to go in that. I was ready to like, like you see Sheldon Keith's reaction after that two on O. I mean, yeah, and the fact that they allowed it to on O on the power play at that is just disgusting. First of all, yes, um, unforgivable. Like, I mean, sh- look, Samsung had an amazing night, and, and and you know, I wanted to make sure that we started with the positives yes. in this game. They did get the two points. They did yes. win the game, but they were not the better team tonight. They were, no. they were quite awful. Like to be quite like they were, they were pretty bad. Like they, they. Turn the puck over, I think, 17 turnovers tonight, 17 giveaways for the Maple Leafs. Uh, they didn't generate really much of anything at 5-on-5. Five five. The power play was disgusting. 0-for-5 on the power play tonight and didn't really get many good looks uh, uh, on the man advantage either. The best chance of the night came shorthanded. <laughs> like that shorthanded goal where, again, Austin Matthews, why he felt like he was good to just go to the bench <laughs> Like, there is a 2 on a odd man rush the other way, and you just kind of lollygag and go off for a change? What were you thinking? What were you thinking, guy? It's it, it's perplexing to me because, look, these guys are out there for a minute. I think it was like a minute 40 on that probably. I get it. You're out there for a minute 40. It's not like you were humming and hawing for that whole minute 40. You weren't yeah. going full steam. You're so, passing around the perimeter, just kind of slapping the puck around. Yeah. Like, don't give me any of that. Like, you're dead ass tired. Yeah, you're probably a little tired. I'll get that. I'll give them that. It wasn't like they were fresh off, you know, coming off the bench or anything like that. But it's just inexcusable. But it's not the first time anything like that's ever happened to this team. It, like, I, this, they are the worst team at doing line changes in the NHL. It's given with all the um too, too many, many men calls. on the on the call on the ice calls i'll say this Please. i haven't seen one of those in a little bit they have yeah. seemed to crack down on that but they've cracked down on that but now they're allowing two on o's on the power play instead yeah well because now no one's jumping on the ice because they don't want to yeah. get too many yeah men exactly it, you know what like it's inexcusable if that goal went if that if they scored on that two on oh no chance the leaves are winning i mean first off Likely no chance Leafs win that game because they hadn't they didn't score in regulation. Like it, 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 the lack of energy was it just really bothered me. There were only few guys that were giving energy start to finish. I'm not talking about later in the game when they they eventually started to get their legs and decided they wanted to play hockey. Because at that point when that two and zero happened, they were being outshot seventeen to actually after that it was like nineteen to five after that inexcusable yeah. yeah so you know what like you i know I, th- I they were saying on twitter after the game that samsonov tried to give the belt back to austin matthews well uh, he tried to because samsonov got the belt on sunday yes. after the win against seattle so what they do is after a win whoever got the belt in the last game gives it to the next player 
And I don't think it happens often where, like, the player, even though they may be, like, the team MVP in back-to-back games, I believe they still typically give the belt up to somebody else. Um, But Austin Matthews (laughs) said to Samson, no chance I'm taking this belt. You keep it, my friend. You are the reason why we got the two points tonight. Uh, I'll I'll give the players credit. They all were like, we did not deserve to win that game. They're yeah. coming out and they're not. They're, they're saying the right things now after the game. I think something finally got through to them. Because even I think Austin Matthews said, like, it's inexcusable what happened on that 2-0. He took accountability for it. Um, just he, be, he It's one of those where I hope that's a wake-up call, right? Something like that's a wake-up call. Because, you know, well, it's, it's it should not ever happen again. No, it shouldn't, and um, uh, I, well, hopefully it is. I mean, again, that's not a situation that happens a lot, granted, but uh, hopefully, yeah, like they, they don't find themselves in a predicament where they're constantly giving up odd man rushes on the power play when they have an extra man on the ice. It is inexcusable. Austin Matthews used the, the correct term there, I believe. Let's continue the conversation because what came from that was a benching, which did rub some feathers and rub some people the wrong way. I want to get your thoughts if you thought it was the right call from Sheldon Keith. So we'll come back, talk about that, talk about some some of the other stuff we saw go down in tonight's hockey game and go through our three stars of the night. Uh, so we'll get to all that on the other side. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is all wrapped up, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use that there are so many different ways to bet. You can do live, same-game parlays, make a parlay. In the Parlay Hub, it's the best way to find the popular ones of the day. You can also find new bets on the new Explore tab and so much more. Uh, any sport, any prop, they got it on FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official, uh, official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morisuti, hopefully the audio is better now because uh, I remembered to grab my microphone. That was my bad. If you thought the audio was poor in the first uh, segment there, uh, that's uh, just like Austin Matthews. It's inexcusable. I can't forget to, to plug in the mic. My, my, my the sec- what Mike was trying to do was he was trying to replicate what the Leafs did in the first period in the first segment when it came to the microphone. And so now... Now we're now the rest of the show is gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah I was asleep at the plane. Uh, I was asleep. I was asleep on the plane, just like uh, Sheldon Keith said about uh, his Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, I don't even know how to transition into what we're gonna get you know, into. You need, you need you, we need to bench you. We clearly need to put you on the bench. Oh, is that what needs to happen? I need to be put on the bench. Okay, I'll sit it out for about a minute or so. And while I'm sitting out, you hop over the boards and you take on the mic for about a minute and you let me know your thoughts on the benching situation on the following power play. Nine, PP1 did not touch the ice. What did you make of that? I, I thought, well, what took Sheldon Keefe so long? Like, like I understand one situ like a situation like that, you want to send a clear message. Like I text you, I said this guy looks like he wants to choke someone. He's big maybe mad. Choke. Like okay, maybe I should have just said kick. Like he wanted he wanted to let off some some steam on the bench there. So what's the what's the one tool a coach can use? It's bench bench your guys. Um, I I know a few people messaged me. Oh, the power play got benched. And I'm like, well, yeah, you have to send some sort of message that what happened was inexcusable. You can yell and scream. Sometimes yelling and screaming isn't enough. You need to take something away, right? You can't just yell and scream at a kid when he does something bad. You need to take away something that they like or they like to do. So you get the message a little clearer. Oh, it's Theo David coming in with the discipline. 
non facciamo questa cosa, ok? Um, and so that's what Sheldon Keith did. He, you know, it was, I think it was enough enough. And like, we complained, or we've heard complaints, the Leafs don't get power, you know, power play opportunities. The refs haven't really given the Leafs the calls. They were getting the calls in this game. Yeah. And did diddly five, squat. 5 1 was, uh, yeah, well, 5 1 five, or 5, five two. 2. They, they took another one in, in overtime. Yeah. So 5 2 was the the play, uh, the penalty discrepancy. Um, and even the one they took, like it, it, uh, it negated a penalty. It gave you four on four hockey. Yeah. So it's not even like it, it, like four, it was like third. Well, it was like 30, 40 seconds of like five on, like that they had to kill off. But still, yeah, yeah, like they did. I'm sure Bonus was not too thrilled on the calls, and he wasn't thrilled. They were penalties. I'll say this though, like the penalty the penalties that did get called did feel like yeah. they're all pretty legitimate penalties. Like that hit to the head of Yarncroc, like I was contact to the head. The only yeah. one that I think was a little cheeky was the Nylander trip. Uh, that mm. may have been a little bit of a dive. <laughs> I'll say that I might have sold that one a little bit, uh, but outside of that one, they all pretty much uh, seemed like they deserved the the penalties that they were given. That being said, to get back to the benching, um, yeah, I, I it, you know what, I understand both both sides of the argument though. Like, sure, I think that you can look at him and say, hey. Well, Last time those guys were out there, they gave up a, a, a two on oh. So <laughs> are you sure you want them out there again? You know, can I trust you? Like almost passive aggressively sit them out because it's like, I don't know if I can trust you. Last time you're out there, this is what happened. Um, but at the same time, you're right. That is the one tool that they kind of have to send a message to their players and say, Hey, if you don't smarten up, you know, you're not gonna like what happens next. This is a bit of a warning shot, the mm -hmm. fact that you're missing out on this power play. Okay, next time you do get out there, get going. Um, but I wonder if it was the right call just based on the situation of the game. Like, the game was still winnable. And the Maple Leafs yeah. are not in a position where they can be giving away points. Now, they did end up winning the game. But if they didn't win and there was an opportunity to score on that power play if they would have had Matthews and Marner and Nylander out there maybe they would have scored and 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 you know things could have yeah. been different uh luckily they won so we don't really need to talk about how it, it you know was a bad decision but I, I do look at it and think to myself in a tie game zero zero where it seems almost like a next goal is gonna win type of scenario you probably should have your best goal scorers out on the ice I mean, I know you want to send a message, but I don't like there's a time and a place. Again, I, I can see both sides of the argument, but yeah. to play devil's advocate, that might not have been the time and place. Luckily, it didn't come back to bite him in the ass. Obviously, it didn't matter. They still won the game, um, but it, it could have went the other way. And then we really if, if the Leafs came out with zero points tonight, I think that would have been a, a much bigger talking point. Would it have made more sense to bench a couple of players that were guilty of that two on zero, rather than the whole PP one? Well, or, you I... or you figure just bench everyone? Well, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm... Tavares did get out there. I think Tavares... he must have gone. He must have gone out there for the draw. Uh, I can't remember now. I'm pretty sure Tavares did have have a chance out there, but. Look, I, I know what you're getting at. Pretty much, you look at the two guys, Marner and, and Matthews, should they have been, you know, two guys who have sit. And I don't know, like, if you're going to sit guys, like, sit them for a few shifts at five on five. You know what I mean? Not, like, they weren't generating anything anyways. It's not like, you know, they were out there completely cooking the Winnipeg Jets. So it's not like you would have been missing anything. But on the power play, it is a little bit different, and it's your opportunity to get your best scores out there, your best chance to score a goal. Not recently. I think they're one for tw one for the last 20 in their last eight games. It's It's been abysmal. Don't get me wrong. It's been terrible, and uh, hopefully they change things coming out of the All-Star break. But 
I can see this being a bit of a conversation moving forward. Uh, but again, because they actually won the game, maybe it doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like that again, you they haven't had a lot of opportunities, but again, the opportunities they've had, as you mentioned, haven't been going in the net. And you, you do have to consider, you know, there are guys who are struggling on that power play. Like John Tavares hasn't, hasn't been doing much offensively. You wonder. You know, do you Neilander, you, like I know Neilander had a couple of goals in yeah. uh it was a Vancouver he scored yeah a couple goals, but outside of that, I don't think he scored in seven or eight games. Well, I, that, like, that game. We we've seen this power play go on these hot and cold streaks, but at the same time, they've always tried something to maybe jig it up, like change things up, get a different get a different rhythm going. Um, so well, that's like, what John Klingberg was supposed to do, right? He was supposed to be a bit of a difference maker. And, and even if they eventually went back to Riley, if they did go in a, a one for 20 run, all right, well, let's go back to Klingberg, but that's just not obviously an option at this point in time. Um, I, like, would you consider breaking, breaking them up and maybe having more of a balance? Cause one of the things that really got Keith pissed off wasn't necessarily the change, but it was like you're out there for the full two minutes, basically. Like that's why you felt like you had to come off to the bench. You're out there for two whole minutes. You should have made a change at some point. And I don't. I, I think they want to be more conscious, uh, conscious of doing that, of not spending the full two minutes on the first unit, um, and get fresher legs out there for like the second unit if they can, especially if they're wearing them down, and then do an on the fly type of change. And then still have that, you know, uh, penalty kill unit, um, you know, hurt or not hurt, but tired, especially in the second period, like when you're closer to the bench than than they are. So there's there's a lot of different factors uh, when it comes to it. But yeah, you can you can understand why Sheldon Keefe was none too pleased about it. But I, I I would would it shock you if we saw kind of more of a split unit come the next game on Saturday, like if he kind of splits things up a little bit and we see, I don't know, maybe Tavares and Nylander drop to PP2 and maybe like Nick Robertson goes up to, to the first unit or or Tyler Bertuzzi goes up to the first unit or Yarn Crocker. I mean, I, I actually wouldn't be surprised at this point. One I think, for the last I, 20, do something. I think, I think Robertson would make, if you're going to add someone, Robertson makes the most sense. Or Yarn Croc. I think Yarn Croc can make some sense. He could. I, I was just wondering what you're trying to get. Like, what are you trying to add that's going to make that change, right? What's going to well, make it, well, Okay, so who would you be sending down? If I, had to make, if I had to make my choice, it would probably be Tavares. Would be right, the first. so yeah. Tavares, yeah. who plays net front. You're yeah. going to have Nick Robertson playing net front? You'd have to change who plays the net front. Um, it, yeah, if you're going to... You could do that. You could put someone else there, but yeah. Anyway, um, that's a conversation for maybe, maybe tomorrow we can get into yeah. that. Perhaps we'll see something different at practice and we could kind of break it down. Uh, speaking of Nick Robertson, he might show up in just a couple of minutes. Let's take a break, come back and talk about our three stars of the night. The Leafs with a one nothing win over the Winnipeg Jets, a monster performance from Ilya Samsonov. We'll come back with our three stars in just a moment. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Leafs podcast is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over three and a half million global, 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Leveraging over 140 million qualification preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. 
Join more than three and a half million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now. Support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. You can find us Monday through Friday, wherever you do download your podcast. We're also available on YouTube each weekday as well. Just search up Locked On Leafs. Uh, go ahead. If you enjoyed this video, hit a like. Let us know down below if you think the Maple Leafs should do something to change up that power play. One for 20. Over their last eight games, uh, the lack of scoring on this team is really coming back to to bite them thin tonight because Samsonov was stellar, perfect, 32 out of 32 shots put aside by Samsonov tonight. It was an epic performance by him, and uh, I'm sure he'll show up as we get into our three stars of the night. But we'll start with our third star, Dave. Why don't you uh, take the reins here first? Who would you give the third star to? Oh, man. I really wish I didn't have to do three three stars for tonight. Uh, okay, so you know what's funny? I, I, it, was it just as hard for you to come up with three stars as it was for me? Yeah. Like, I think that's a testament to how poor the Leafs actually did play tonight. That I'm sitting here thinking, outside of Ilya Samsonov, was there anyone who's actually worthy of, like, a star tonight? Like, th- was there? Did you come up with anyone? I honestly like I I was gonna throw out like uh I like a Simone Benoit, but I, like I didn't feel confident about that. Like to me, honestly, the third star should go to Laurent Bossois. because because I thought he was pretty stellar too for the Jets. Because like the Leafs eventually did play a bit better offensively and got chances, and Bossois had to make some really tough saves. Yeah. No, I think that's, honestly, that's appropriate. That is appropriate. If we're thinking, you know, all right, who are the best three players on the ice? Not just focusing on the Maple Leafs. Like Laurent Brossois definitely was one of the three guys out there. I mean, it, it took 64 and a half minutes for Toronto to beat beat the guy. You know what I mean? And and Toronto's a pretty good team. Like I get it. The Jets, they're they're tough. They're physical. They don't give you a lot of space. They don't allow a lot of goals. I mean, they've allowed less than four goals in was it now 35 of their last 36 games like they won 34 straight games giving up three goals or less and and tonight they gave up just one and toronto needed extra time to do it at that um so i think for sure laurent brossois it didn't matter that it wasn't connor hallibuck laurent brossois put together quite a performance for uh for the winnipeg jets to give them a chance to win this game as well so you know what I'll take it. I'll double it. I'll also give him a third star. Uh, the only other player who that's why I did consider Simon Benoit too. So that he had a couple of plays tonight, um, you know, defensively with his stick and, and he had a couple of hits and uh, I thought, yeah, maybe Benoit. Cause but he wasn't a liability out there. Essentially. I think yeah. is why I thought maybe Benoit, he wasn't as bad as, as most of the, the players. Him, him and Timmons weren't, bad uh weren't their, terrible they were the numbers terrible. do suggest too that they were uh one of the better pairings you know their underlying numbers but i think again it's they weren't playing top minutes they were sheltered and it, it worked it worked right they didn't get killed tonight so that's that's good but i do want to give a shout out and now I, I i think this is probably who i'm gonna give the second star to i'm gonna give a shout out to nick robertson yeah i am gonna yeah. nick robertson because that overtime goal does not happen if Nick Robertson doesn't make a little heads up play, knock the puck down out of midair and keeps the, the the play alive in that zone. Right. And it's unfortunate. He he ends up going off, off the ice and then allows Riley and Matthews to do their thing. So he doesn't even pick up the plus. Um, we'll see. Maybe they can do some cheekiness and the referees just give it to him anyways. But you know, that the, the winning goal, the game winning goal is set up by just a really nice play by him in the offensive end. Uh, there was a couple of instances tonight where, you know, Nick Robertson actually did some good things with the puck uh, and off the puck, too, for that matter, to uh, to, to, to to make some plays for this team. So uh, Nick Robertson, I, I think, should get the second star. 
Yeah, he had my second star too. I uh, played, a, I think it was a season high of over 17 minutes in this game. Well, I think he er- he's he, he, he earned, earned extra. He got, extra he got double ice. shifted in this game. Yeah, well, in the second period, he ended up up on the the second line with with uh, Nylander and Tavares. I, I think I think when you know I think he understands that he needs to start doing things like this if he wants to have any chance of sticking around, you know, long term. He needs to be able yeah. to show. He needs to bring the energy. Look, you're not going to score on every shift. You're not going to score every game. Sheldon Keith needs to see the other things you're doing to bring the energy. He was the only one bringing the energy. Like he's the only player I noticed, you know, tonight. And <laughs> the only bad thing about that, that play in the overtime was he, he gets the takeaway. He gives it to the best goal scorer on the planet only for Matthews to say, I'm going to pass it back to you. And it kind of almost flubbed that great opportunity. Yeah. But again, like we've seen a lot of people are upset that Nick Robertson hasn't been given the opportunity because they're seeing the good right now, but they tend to forget that there's times where he hasn't really brought it right. Yes. He scored goals, but he's also had moments where he's, he's not doing exactly what this team needs him to do. But you could say, considering the lack of scoring depth, this team has the last person that shouldn't should be benched right now is Nick Robertson. And yeah. now he's giving Sheldon Keith even more of a reason to not take him out of the lineup because he's now bringing that energy that this bottom six is desperately needed. And even the top six at time when they don't have energy, he's the one that's now being called upon. Yeah. Urgency play with a little bit more urgency than the yeah, rest. I think that's, that's a good word, word to, to use uh, in, in reference to that. And you talked about there being not much scoring lately. Kevin Papetti, good lead follow. If, uh, if you're not following yeah, me yet on Twitter, that. Yeah, he just tweeted out how porous the secondary scoring has been. Uh, David Camp, goalless in 19 games. Noah Gregor, goalless in 17 games. Matthew Nyes, zero goals in 14 games. Tyler Bertuzzi, zero goals in 13 games. John Tavares, zero goals in 10 games. He's got just one goal at five on five since returning from Sweden, Dave. That's we're going on almost 30 games at, where he has just one goal at five on five in that span, but hasn't scored at all in his last 10. Cali Yarncroft goal is in nine. And then Max Domi, zero goals in 16, just or zero goals in six games, just one in his last 16. So, like, that's legitimately your entire bottom nine, basically. Like, outside of your top four players, uh, like Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and then Nick Robertson wasn't on that list because he's one of the only ones who's actually scoring outside of literally yeah. Marner, Nylander, and Matthews, and Robertson, I guess. Nobody has been scoring for this team. They get the odd ball goal from a blue liner, I suppose. Like, Riley has chipped in here and there. They got something from McCabe a couple of nights ago. But typically, if it ain't Matthews, and, it, and again, tonight, it was Austin Matthews. That was the only guy who could score a goal tonight was Austin Matthews. Wasn't a beautiful one. Wasn't great. Wasn't grand. But hey, they don't ask uh, how. They just ask how many. And that's what, 30, 39 now on the year, 38, 39. So pretty solid for him. Um, but yeah, like they, they've got to turn things around. They got to start scoring some goals here. Uh, and, and one of the guys who can help with that as of right now, at least seems to be Nick Robertson, who's, you know, well, I'm not going to call it a hot stick, but he's got four goals his last seven games. And he assisted on the game winning goal tonight alongside uh, Matthews and, and Riley, or at least set up the goal. I don't know if he actually got credited for it, but he helped set it up and get that play going. Uh, the first star, obviously, it's Ilya Samsonov. This guy was dynamite, unbelievable tonight, made some real 10-bell saves, and that's now two games in a row where he's had to do that, where he's had to come up with these big stops, where he's had to, uh, you know, the, the game on Sunday, no, not Sunday, was it Sunday? Yeah. yeah. Sunday against the Kraken. Didn't face a whole lot. It was kind of a, a, a tidy 17 save performance tonight. Not the case. He had to be on his a game early and often. That was one of our keys. If you listen to yesterday's preview, it was, if this team's going to win, Sam South's going to have to bring his a game. And he did that. <laughs> a brought his a plus game at that yeah. actually, because he was 100% uh, tonight stopped all 32 saves for a shutout. 
He was incredible tonight. Uh, saved 2.75 goals above expected. Uh, he is deservedly the number one star of tonight's game. Well, two things about Samsonov. Uh, one comment that came out of the game from Laurent Boissois, the other goaltender in this game. I knew we were in trouble when he made that save on the 2 on 0. Mm. That's a hey. pretty. He got into he... the mind of the opposition's goalie. See, that wouldn't have happened if Hellbuck was in that. Hellbuck no. would not have said that. No, Hellbuck would not have said that. No. But, like, you have to imagine when you don't score on a play like that, you got to be like, are you freaking kidding me? We did not score yeah. on this. It plays into the mentality a little bit there. Because what was everyone talking about? Samsonov, his struggles and everything. I guarantee Winnipeg is like, we're going to we're gonna make this guy turn back into a pumpkin again. And <laughs> Samsonov is like, nah, no, you're not. And and that's, I think, for the Leafs, you could not have asked for a better time for Samsonov to finally find his game because it wasn't looking good. Like, this team had been outplayed so many times, and they haven't gotten that save. Martin Jones did his best. He gave them opportunities to win. Yeah. But Samsonov is putting in that. He's given that extra mile now for this team. And, yeah, he's... Uh, Tonight, tonight. Let's tonight. not let's not get ahead of ourselves. He did it tonight. Well, and he did it in the other game too because the Kraken had their opportunities as well. Okay, but like okay. tonight, he like, stole he stole them the game tonight. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent, one thousand percent. Samsov stole two points tonight, one thousand percent. So now it's okay. Now he's gonna get in. Like he's getting the next game against Winnipeg. Let's Doesn't see how he, he does. I mean, how can you not give him the next game? No, I mean, I agree. I'm just, you know, pressing yeah. you. I I'm No, you're you. giving him the next game. Uh, he's not going to go up against Connor Hellebuck in Winnipeg. Yeah. Turn, they're dial, this is going to dial up the pressure a little bit more. But deserve yeah, and, and we'll see. I, Mark Shifley, he skated this morning with the team, so he'll probably be ready to go for Saturday, I would imagine. Uh, Gabe Velarde, we'll see. He's day to day. We'll, we'll see, see what Josh he... Morrissey. Yeah, Josh left Morrissey game. left the game tonight with an injury. We'll see what his status is moving forward. But you know, they're they're probably going to have reinforcements. They're going to be on home ice. They'll have last change. They'll be able to pick on the third pair if they want. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how Sheldon Keefe can combat those to still try and help Samsonov. And you know, can Ilya take the confidence? that he's gaining from these games from the one in Seattle from the one tonight here in Toronto, where he was just astounding. Can he take those performances and the confidence that he's gotten from them and keep it going? I know he keeps saying he's living moment to moment. Uh, I think that's a really you know good thing for him to be doing. Obviously it's, it's working out for him. He's uh, it allows him to be more calm when he's not thinking or overthinking and you know he looks more calm out there over the course of the last few games tonight definitely looked way more calm so i'm not ready to sit here and be like he is back i feel like he's this team's number one going forward he's a top 10 goalie in the league again can he get to that sure but again i want to see a few weeks of it you come back from the all-star break and can you give me a few more starts like this then i'll be a believer yeah. right that so so ask me Ask me mid Feb how how if Ilya Samsonov is back. Ask He's, me maybe mid Feb. The wheels are the wheels are spinning in the right direction. Absolutely. He's going forward, oh not God. backwards, but he still he he hasn't gone to the finish line yet. No, no. Uh, but hey, steps in the right direction, man. That's all you got to do. You know, keep moving forward, not backward, and and, and you'll eventually get there. Uh, it sounds as though actually today in practice. Um, Joseph Wall was, was spotted practicing uh, and was asked if he was going to be good to go anytime soon. And it said, uh, Sheldon Keefe said, um, definitely not until after the All-Star break and, and maybe not necessarily right after, but... Uh, He's got to practice. Sound... Like they're going to give him more. They're going to ramp him up after the All-Star break and maybe he'll get to games eventually. Yeah, so it doesn't sound like it's going to be like the game or two after the break, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, a week or two after the all-star break mid Feb, uh, he'll, he'll be back. And 
uh, by that time, hopefully Samsonov is, you know, still playing at this level. And then the Toronto Maple Leafs have the tandem that they wanted to have. And then they'll be in a good spot. And then all of a sudden it's, well, can we get Tavares going? Can, can you get Nylander going? Can you get a goal here and there from Camp and Yarncroft and Domi, Tyler Bertuzzi, who's been absolutely snake bitten? Can you get a goal from the back end? Do you make a trade to bring in someone uh, to give you a little bit more offense? And all of a sudden, you do look at this team differently today than you did, you know, a week ago when they were mired in that skid where they had lost four in a row and they were giving up leads left, right, and center. And it was, oh, this team. They may not even be buyers at the deadline. There's not a lot, a lot that would have to, uh, or a lot's gone wrong for this team. And just a few tweaks could really put this team in a different light. I think a couple more goals from, you know, Tavares and Nylander, a couple more goals from lower in the lineup. And like I said, you know, you, you get Samson off rebounding back to life here. And I think this squad's in a, in a different situation and, all of a sudden, maybe you do make a push at the deadline for something big. Uh, but we'll have plenty of time to talk about that later on, Dave. Uh, we will. Um, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Kodak. Follow Dave at the underscore Morris Sudi and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Uh, go ahead, if you enjoyed this video on YouTube, leave a like. We'd really appreciate that. And a comment down below your thoughts on tonight's game. And, hey, should they make a change to the struggling power play? Let us know down below. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. We'll help tee up part two of the home and home as the Leafs travel out to Winnipeg Saturday night. So we'll get that pod out to you tomorrow. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.